De facto podcast is privileged to have been founded on Wadjuk Noongar land. We pay our respects to the traditional owners of this land and express our sincere gratitude for their ongoing guidance as we work in their community. Hello and welcome back to another episode of De Facto. We discuss our 9 to 5 kind of relationships in another podcast that are in the last for. I'm Nicolette. I'm Kate. Also, a big shout out and happy 21st to Lainey. Hello, Jason. Lainey. Happy birthday. So, Nicolette. Nick, well, I guess first thing, we're sorry we've been away. Yes. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot. We've had some things. Many of things. Um, I got COVID and I'm actually still sick, so we're going on like day 15 of COVID. So that's one of the big reasons. Yes. Nicolette also went away. I was away. We're having, having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> some of us were sick. Some of us are up in Monkey Maya. Yeah. Haven't been there. Shout out to Monkey Maya. Beautiful. Dolphins. Yep. Dugons, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. turtles, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, the whole shebang, lovely. Yep. Did anything good happen in Monkey Mile? Lots of good things, uh huh. But you know, I was only there for a week, so yeah. it was all right. It yeah. was lovely, but not long enough. Yep, yep. never is. Holidays never are long enough. No, they're not. And um, I also, I also went to Sydney. You did go to Sydney. I had a great time in Sydney. I did some really, really cool things. But like I said. Um, Got COVID. Did you get COVID? And we know what happened last time I got COVID. Do you want to remind everyone what happened last what time? Ha- when I had uh, COVID last time, I got dumped, right? Mm. So this time I was thinking towards the end of it, mm. I was thinking I've almost made it through. Yeah. We're getting through, right? Mm. Fucking wrong. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> I got my ass got dumped during COVID again for the again. second time. Again. Uh, the second time, Lainey's face. And you know what Lainey said two weeks ago? She said, it's breakup error. She said, everyone's breaking up. Yep. And we said, nah. Not us. Maybe in your friendship group, Not Lainey. us. <laughs> Not us. Not us. Yes, so, so I... So it's been, it's been a while. So we do apologise for the yes. loss, uh, break. Yep. But we also have been going through a breakup. We've been going through a breakup. Nicolette's been going through it. I know, obviously, been I've also been going through it. <laughs> I'm um, obviously not going through a breakup, but she's through it with me. I'm, I'm with she's coming, Kate. doing, going through it with me. And let me tell you, it has been tough. Tough. It has been so tough. Um, I did make a TikTok about it, which sixty thousand people have now watched <laughs> me cry. So I feel like I might as well talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> and I also feel <laughs> if you're going to be sad about it, you might as well get. TikTok famous. Right? Exactly. That's what I thought. Exactly. I thought, I'm going to make something good out of this. Let's get TikTok famous. So I think we're going to, what we're going to talk about today are breakups. Yeah. And maybe I'll tell my bit of the story mm-hmm. and then we'll talk about some, some seven stages of breakups. And then we're going to talk about our, I'm going to go into like our glow up era and then we're going to do the chaos era. Yeah. We're talking about some all eras. things. But anyway, who is our sponsor today? I've got two sponsors. I've got sweet potatoes. Yeah. Which we may have already had before, but do you want to tell them why it's sweet potato? Well, the reason why we picked sweet potatoes <laughs> as our sponsors today is because um, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, my ex-partner bought a new house and moved in. So Nicolette got him a joke housewarming present of a sweet potato. And so now the running joke is, I want my sweet potato back, I bitch. want it back. Oh, I'm pissed. I spent a dollar twenty on that. I picked out the biggest sweet potato of the bunch mm-hmm. and he probably ate it. That fucker didn't even, you know, and you know, when he dropped off your stuff, he could have dropped off the sweet, sweet potato, potato back to me. That's all I'm saying. And there's one bowl he still has of mine. One Pop. bowl. And I don't want no, I don't want a set of three. I want a set of four. And three's a crowd. Three's a you crowd, know? mate. You know what I mean? You definitely, and why would he want one? Mm. Probably because he's always just going to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> he only needs one bowl. Um, so that's him. So yeah, our sponsor is sweet potatoes. Um, the other option I was thinking was, um, you remember that that marketing campaign for the Northern Territory that was like, see you in the NT? Yep. I was thinking that one. No, yeah, sure. If you haven't seen it, go and look it up and you'll know <laughs> why I'm now saying, see you in the NT. In the NT. Love that. <laughs> um, you know what else I did want to mention though? Last time we spoke about the billboard, the oh, only yes. fans billboard. Yep. 
Yes, when we left, I did look for it and I did notice it. And I've realised on the drive here that I actually have tunnel vision when I drive. <laughs> and I don't look at anything else around me. I focus on the prize and that's where I'm going. Yeah. So and that's anyway, safety though. That's safety that on is the safety. road. And I did notice the billboard and I thought to myself, I thought, how did I not <laughs> notice that the first time? In my face, I'd be disgusted. But I thought, because we said we wanted to get a billboard. Now we even did. more of a reason because... You're hot and single. And I'm going through my, I'm about to, I'm about to start yeah. my glow up. I think it officially starts tomorrow, I would say. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it may have more reason for us to get a billboard and to do the speed dating thing we've always talked about. Yeah. Connor, <laughs> always. we need your help to get all your friends together to do speed dating. Yeah, we're going to do speed dating. Um, but this, so this billboard, I looked it up because I'm, you know, nosy, mm -hmm. cost her $7,500 for the billboard. I'm yep. not quite sure how long that goes for. However, mm -hmm. she made 100 k in the first week oh. of being on that billboard. Babe, and I said, genius. pop off, queen. Pop love that. right off. Absolutely love that. So who also knows, you know. The success how we much could achieve if we put seven and a half grand into a billboard. And we'll say it's an OnlyFans. We'll get them to scan it. And it's not really an OnlyFans. It takes us to the J Factor. <laughs> it just takes us to... <laughs> Us. Hello. <laughs> Re, maybe we should start at OnlyFans, but just like regular content. And then people pay because the, they yeah. want to see it. Actually, now we're telling them that's what it is. Or will we? No, but maybe we're the niche of like people get, get horny over regular content. <laughs> so they could just go on Instagram. <laughs> of people that would pay some good money for that. <laughs> I know I had someone that sold their feet pics once. Like just a regular... Girl, and I said, How? Well, I didn't. My friend was telling me about it. She said she made 50 bucks on one feet, foot pick. Fuck. But then she's too grossed out. She never did it again. If I sold six feet picks, that's a new set of lips for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, another thing that actually happened to me before I went up north. So I, I wanted to get, try a fake tan, like a spray tan place. Yep. I've never had a spray tan before. So I was like asking around. He, apparently, no one gets spray tans anymore. Cause, like, I get them. Well, no one could recommend a good spray tan place. Oh, ask me. North Except, of the river. Yeah. No, nah, you know you're out. I'm out of that. Well, I mean, technically, you are north of the river. Technicalities, whatever. Yep. <laughs> and then, so I went to this place and she was like, oh, um, the disposable undies are in there. But she didn't say you can go naked if you want. I'm a nude gal. I, I would no too. Lines. If I knew I could go naked, I would have gone naked. Yeah. But I didn't know that. So I had the disposable G-string on, which is fucking huge, mm. may I say. Like, that's not a G-string to me. That's like full undies. They're puffy. They're puffy. What's with the, what's they're with the, the puff? No, they've got a cater for the foopers. <laughs> the foopers, yeah. And the bush. Um, True. The, oh, actually, maybe it's the bush they cater for. There's puffy at the back. I was like, I don't have any welcome mat. <laughs> did, did you not tuck it in? I tried. So that's what I did. And then because I thought, because I'm going up north next week. This is two weeks ago. And, like, you know how now our bathers, like, we wear them a bit higher? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, I'm not going to have the band, like, at hip level. I've got to have it up higher, like, the top of my hips. Yep. So, I pulled it up higher. And at the front, I was like, yep, oh, good. Like, that would cover my bikini. But I didn't realise at the back that it was, like, halfway up my freaking... Like, I reckon it was a good 10 centimetres above my crack. Like, the full triangle of the bikini. And so, she sprayed me. And I told this chick it was my first spray tan. I was like, she could have told me yeah. or just mentioned it that, A, I could have gone naked and You're B. about to have a big white stripe up your back from, so, the, from the tan line. Exactly. And then I get home and I, sh you know, I have this, like, giant landing strip, like, white arrow on top of my crack that would have gone above my bathers. So it would have been, like, the top of my bather line, white arrow pointing down to my crack. So I had to get my own tan and, and blend it in. What did you pay for Exactly. Then? What did you pay for? And I also had a dribble down my leg of the spray tan. And Don't I thought, I'm not going back. Come to my lady. Yeah. We'll do we'll do my lady for your wedding, I reckon. No, no, we've decided. Oh, we're gonna buy our own machine. Yeah, we're gonna buy our own machine. And we're gonna learn to spray tan They're each like other. They're like four hundred bucks or something. Oh, I thought they were like a hundred. Oh. But they're hundred. Okay, why well, do we, why do we need to go third if it's a hundred bucks? I don't know, but we're gonna do a well, bit more research. One each. We don't need one each. Yeah, we don't. We just need one. But we're gonna do a bit more research yeah. is the plan now. And then potentially we might buy a machine and start spray tanning each other every fortnight. And we might even advertise it on a billboard. Yeah. Spray tanning. That's our Two new bucks. things. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, <laughs> up the prices, babe, up the prices. Inflation. Um, I had a funny story. I, uh, so I, my brother has a dog, a Kelpie, and we kind of share him because my brother works away. So I usually have him when my brother's away, but I'd given him to my brother's girlfriend for a little bit. 
And then I needed to get him back because then the breakup happened and I needed my puppy Comfort. cuddles. So on Saturday, I drove to her house to pick him up and she lives like at the back of a row of units and it's like a two-story house and she's like the one at the very end. So I just like drove down to the back, jumped out of the car and was calling out for him. So the dog's name is Fish and I was going like, Fish, come here, Fish. <laughs> and she wasn't there but she said she if I just go around the gate and grab him, whatever. And then I see by the front door there's like – the, the ball throwing thing, you know, the long yeah, plastic yeah. thing. So I grab that, put that in the car and then I'm standing there and I'm like, where is the gate? Like, it's got, it's got to be here. Like, why can't I see the gate? And I'm looking through the windows in this house. Like, is anyone here? And I'm calling out for him and I see a neighbour and I'm like, hi. <laughs> I'm trying to get around the side. <laughs> and then I went up and like looked through the windows again and I was like, oh my God, this is not her house. <laughs> this is not her house. <laughs> So then I like jumped in the car and like not the thrower already in the car. <laughs> I was like <laughs> out of the fucking driveway, over to the next driveway, go down. I'm like okay, this is it. I grab the dog, put him in the back of the car, get in the front. The fucking ball thrower <laughs> is still there. I was like, oh my god, I actually cannot handle this today. I cannot handle this. And guys are a lot right now, okay? And then I had to drive. Back and I was like, I'm not going to drive down the long driveway. I'll park and then w- walk. And then so I get out. I grab the little ball throwing thing and I'm running down. And then I realise the person's whose house I've stolen from their garage door is up. They're in their car, about to reverse out, and I'm running down with this fucking thing. <laughs> Imagine if they had a ring doorbell and they're like, this thing peering in our window. Oh, ball thrower! I'll take that one. <laughs> Off I go. Like that's all they would have seen you take. So then I just like. I just like kind of like, you know, when you like duck walk, like you kind of bob down and you're like, sorry, sorry. And then just like put it back and was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then mistake, (laughs) mistake. And you got the hands and like you got to explain yourself (laughs) and it's a whole thing. Oh God. I was like, this is actually like, this is too much. Yeah. I've been through a lot and this is too much for me. (laughs) Yeah, that I agree. That would tip me. That was my 13th reason really. Yeah. And then he's, you know, the dog is going through a really tough time with all these different owners right now and he's. He's just, he's been a bit of an asshole. Yeah, he snapped and, like, at me. He snapped at Nicolette. I was like, bro, I met you like 10 times. Relax. 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 Re- bring it I down. I went to like Kate's house. I went to open the gate and he was on the inside. And the gate's like <laughs> hip height, if mm. that. So he could jump over he could, it. He, the day he figures out he can jump it, <laughs> We're fine. you're screwed. I don't know why. He's a Kelpie. He could leap that in like a step. And I was like, went to open it and he was like, Dah. and we had that little like annoying like. Dah. And when he gets his little Yeah, teeth and then out. he snarled at me and I was like, the fuck? I was yeah. like, bro, you got some issues. Divorced yeah. parents. <laughs> he's you know, he's got divorced parents. <gasps> he's got a few owners right now, so he's going through a tough time. He is. So and you know what? He's trialing which owner he can get away with the, the most. most. The party house. Mm-hmm. And it's not the strict house. I've got the very strict house. Well, however, I did let him, let him sleep on the bed the other night. Wow. We had a party at our house on Saturday night. Um and I thought this is good. This is a good little distraction for me. Mm-hmm. I didn't get too drunk because I was like, "There's no way I'm waking up hungover on Sunday." Sad, mm-hmm. I like and, and hungover yeah. and depressed. You know what I mean? No, yeah. no thanks. However, I decided because it was my friend's thirtieth. I was like, "I'll put on a beautiful charcuterie board for him." Nice, <laughs> And by I mean put it on. I mean I'll go and buy the food and put it together, but he can pay for it. Obviously, yeah. Well, it's his party. Yeah. So. I'm like, I put it all together and it would look beautiful actually. And I start bringing it out. And then one of the guys comes up to me and goes, um, where's the gluten-free food? <laughs> and I said, what? And he goes, well, my girlfriend's gluten-free. Well, tell her to bring her own and I was like, crackers. There's no gluten-free food on this. Like, I don't know you. I don't know your girlfriend. I don't know your dietary yeah. requirements. And she was basically standing there just like looking at him. She's probably had like nah. a gun in the side, like go ask about the <laughs> fucking gluten-free Sorry, it's if it's not an RSVP with dietary <laughs> with requirements, dietary requirements. <laughs> don't care. No, I just don't care. Absolutely, it's already free. Have your gluten and shut up. And no, then she was kidding. a bit of a bitch about the dog, and I was like, "Babe, I I will slap you. I will slap <laughs> don't you. Don't toy with me right now. Not today. It's been a week. It's been a week, love. Well, actually, you know what that does tie into? What common courtesy things? Common courtesy things. Okay. And I did write some things down mm-hmm. about. This is our hot top, by the way. Okay, yeah, hot top. Hot top. Common courtesy things. Obviously, Kate and I have a thing about road rage. That's normal. Yeah. We just don't so like... We, we know the driving we, thing. And we just reckon people need to chill out a bit more on the roads. Well, exactly. <laughs> Us ourselves are completely fine. Um, no, so that would be a common courtesy thing. Chilling out on the roads? No. Or going to a party and when there's free food, not complaining. And saying, is anything gluten-free? And I would have said, carrots. There's carrots there. 
yeah, you can definitely ask, mm-hmm. but don't be upset don't with the Don't demand. Answer. Don't mm-hmm. demand up in my grill, bro. Um, this is one that I thought I could definitely agree with. Splitting bills. Okay. So, common courtesy thing. Oh, this You're is going to be me now when I start going on first <laughs> dates again. Fuck! No, splitting. What? <sighs> you know, split <laughs> first dates, please. Um, only splitting if it's even. So if one person has ordered like a salad and another person's got the crayfish, yeah, it's um, it's never like if the salad person says let's split, mm-hmm. that's all right, sure, whatever. But if the crayfish person, yeah. as the crayfish person, you got to say no, no, I'll get mine, yeah, you get yours, yeah. And then it's awkward when like everyone at the table maybe has had like five cocktails, and to be fair, they're probably drunk, and one person drove, and then it's like a splitting bill thing. No, Mm-mm. I'm always aware. Even if like it's not me, but I'm aware of other people. Yeah. And I'm like, no, they didn't have any cocktails on anyway. Yeah, 100%. So splitting bills, make sure you know what that is. Okay, I'm going to add one in. Hit me. Don't, here's the thing, don't plan a holiday with someone the day before you break up with them. No. Don't well, do that. Uh, it's a common courtesy That's thing. That's a common courtesy Actually, thing. what about not introducing you to their whole family? How about don't fly them to Sydney to, to meet your family? <laughs> to then break up with them a few days later. Don't do that. No, do that. That's common courtesy. That is common courtesy. <laughs> and it's, you know, then their whole family falls in love with you. And they did. I'm Obviously, amazing. you're a hoot. Um, when someone gives you a sweet potato. <laughs> return it. Return it. Return it. Especially once you've dumped their friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's common courtesy. Yep. <laughs> um, letting people out of a lift before you try and get in. Yes. Yes. Why is that so hard for people to understand? It's not, the lift's not leaving till everyone's out. So going in first doesn't make it quicker. And and then people are trying to get out and other, like, it's the same with trains. Yes. You wait until they're off, you know? Yes. So that's fine. Um, If you're in a car with someone and you're the passenger and your phone rings, say, really sorry, I just got to answer this real quick. You You don't sit and have a conversation. A conversation. For 10 minutes and just to catch up on life. Yeah. If everyone in the car knows the person, why can't I spend gold for that? Yeah. If it's an important conversation, sure. But anyway, how are you? Yeah, just been doing this. Nah. No, dog. It's a quick two minute. Hey, I'm just in the car. Yep, sorry. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. I'm not I'm not your Uber driver. No. I'm your friend. Exactly. So, no. no. I agree. Quick conversations, in, well, especially while someone else is driving. If you're the driver, you probably can, you know. Yeah. I feel like you, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if your bags are on a seat and you know it's going to get busy, take them off. Take them off. Take them off. Take them off. Oh, here's another one. When you fly home from Sydney or another <laughs> location and the baggage circ- thing yep. where they put your bag on. Yes. I have stand, that one. Stand I've got it. Back. Stand back. You don't need to stand right up because now no one can get to their bag and, and it's clogging the system. No one can see if their bag is there. If everyone stands like four metres back. We can all see. We can all see the bag. Create a wide semicircle. You walk in, you grab your bag, you get out of and the way. And you do it really quickly because you're like, oh, sorry, sorry, grab it. And if you grabbed your bag, you don't stand and wait next to the other bag. You pull it to the back mm-hmm. and then you go get your next one. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. That was our next one. Stand back from bag- baggage claim so everyone can see their yeah. bag. <laughs> um, this one <laughs> started off your great thing. When you go into a toilet, right? Mm-hmm. Like a public toilet? A public toilet. So there's two toilets. And you're like, someone's in the other one. And you can tell them that they're maybe like, you know, they're doing a quick wee. They're mm. sitting. Yeah. And you're like, oh, maybe I have to sit as well. Whatever. You're sitting there. By sitting, mean doing a and, shit. And then it's dead quiet, right? Because you're both in there. You're waiting. You're both waiting for the other person to leave to leave. and do the shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No one's leaving. Sure. Whatever. But then if I hear them flush, I'm going to wait like 30 seconds mm-hmm. before I fly. Even if I'm ready. I don't want to flush a second after them and walk out and meet them at the seat. No, seat. yes. You're you, so you right. wait. You, you, you go, wait. Oh, they flushed? Okay, no worries. But the worst part is when you're like sitting there for like a good few minutes and then, no, you're like, okay, then I'm going to go. You flush, one second later they flush. No, no, no. no. The courtesy flush. You've got to wait. You've got to wait. It's a timed thing. Yeah. We're not going out and washing our hands, making eye contact when we've just done <laughs> a shit next to each other. Yeah. No. When, if it's like, like there's 20 stores and everyone's coming out, Whatever. Whatever. But when it's just two, no, no one knows about it. We're waiting. No. Mm-hmm. Um, armrests on planes. Middle seat oh, yeah. gets two. Mm-hmm. Aisle gets the aisle. Window gets the window. Actually, on my flight to Sydney, I sat next to this guy who 
was in love with me. He was fl- flirting with me. He kept he kept talking to me. He was hogging the armrest right. And then I tried to assert some dominance and put my armrest mm-hmm. out because I was in the middle seat. Put my arm out. Yep. And he he wouldn't move. And yep. then so when he'd take his arms off, I'd put it there. And do you know what he would do? Push back. He'd just rest it softly on mine. Oh. So we're not together, bro. We're yep. not together. Um but yeah, I agree. You can you can sometimes share. Like if someone's got them far back, you can maybe go on the front. Mm-hmm. But as a as an aisle and a window person, you can't be chicken winging. No. When the middle seat has nowhere to put yeah. nowhere to go, you got you got the window, you got the aisle. So yeah, yeah exactly. Um, what else did I have? People letting you cross the road walk fast. We're not dawdling. We're not dawdling. <laughs> oh my god! And we're not looking at our phones and slowly walking across. No. Get across. Get out of my goddamn way. Just pretend you're hustling, even mm. if you're not. Mm-hmm. You can take a break at the outside. Old lady. You can take a break at the other side. You can yeah, take a break at the other side right. of the road. Babe. All people are allow, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is a big one. Okay, if you're at, like, a table, like a like a pub table, long table, and, like, there's, like, I don't know, six people there. If you're in the middle, so there's maybe two people on either side of you, you can't lean on the table like that. Because you're blocking Cause, other people's cause then, way of communicating. Because then, especially if you're, like, second from the end, and there's someone on the end next to you and you're leaning forward on the table, mm-hmm. the end person can't be involved in the group. Yep. So if you're in the middle seat, you've got to kind of lean back. You do. Or, or you can have your own seat. Bring your seat out a little bit so everyone can see each other. Yeah. That's common a common courtesy. courtesy, common courtesy thing. Otherwise, you, you're stuck on the end. You've got someone's back half turned to you and mm-hmm. you've no one to talk to. Yeah. So there you go. That's actually how I feel right now <laughs> in my life. It's just stuck on the end. <laughs> Turn back to me. No one to talk to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. Is that them? That was them. I love them. So if you think of any. We'll, we'll bring some more next week. I I'm sure will. when I have time to think and use my, my tiny little woman brain, I'll be able to contribute a little bit more. Exactly. Right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So I guess I'll tell my story. Yeah. So obviously I went to Sydney. Listeners, guys, everyone. And I had the best, best time. Right. Best time. Met all the friends, met all the family. Everything was amazing. Came back and I was like, oh, my God, it was so good. Like, what a fucking idiot. Literally, it was like, that was so good for our relationship. This is, that's the voice I'm going to do for stupid <laughs> past tense, Kate. And obviously, as a podcast, we all know how much I really, really love this guy because I didn't shut the fuck up about him. Yeah. And he was great. He was. Anyway, during the COVID times... Um, you know, when I'm having the thought of like, I'm going to make it through this alive. I'm going to make it through COVID without getting dumped. Um, yeah, he came over one night, came over as per normal, per jumped norm. into bed and then just basically out of the blue was like, no, nah, I don't want to be here. I want to be alone. Um, what else did he say? Oh, I can't remember. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's hectic. Pretty sure yesterday you were just like, talking about this family holiday we're going on. Yeah, Pretty sure you just took me to Sydney. Pretty sure you just said you loved me. Pretty sure you were just planning to take my nephew out for a, a, like an activity. That's hectic. And then he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then he left. And then I went into turmoil, like so much turmoil. <laughs> this ugly girl crying. But like the you're cry- allowed to ugly girl like cry. Like the crying when you're sobbing and like you're like huddled over. Like, like the Kim Kardashian <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I had to take a day off work. And so, okay, this is – and what I'm thinking is it's fucked because he's just bought a new house 100 metres away from me. A 30-second walk from my house, he's just bought that place and moved in. And I said the worst part is now you have to go out looking hot 24-7. Like, you can't even have one day off. Yeah. You always got to – you can't even quickly pop to the shops. No. Nah. In, in Yuggies. No. Nah. And the reason he moved to where I live, because obviously it's a great area, but because he loves the beach that's there and he loves the coffee shop and the wine bar, which is actually where we had our first date, but whatever. Anyway, so day one of, of breakup, I'm um, ugly girl crying, walking home from the beach because I've been laying in the sand just fucking rah, listening to fucking Lewis Capaldi, <laughs> walking home, and then I have to cross, like, the road at the end of, like, my, my street. And so I press a little button to make the traffic stop so I can cross. What happens? He pulls up and has to stop and watch me cross the road whilst a tears just streaming down my face. Luckily, I had a hat and sunnies on. Yeah. And I just deaf stared back, actually. Did you give him the double bird? I wanted to. And I thought, I'm going to rise above this. I'm going to rise above this. 
hit him with your car. Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, so that was on um, Tuesday. And then Thursday is my work from home day. So I go to my local coffee shop to get my morning coffee, which is what I've always done on a Thursday. Who's there? Oh, he's there. Hello. He's there. Hello. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Um, so that was nice. And then <laughs> that then that day he comes over to give me my things back and he just basically writes this letter saying that he was really sorry and that everything was genuine. Um, nice. But he is just going through a really tough time and he's having some conflicting thoughts. And I was like, okay. I've been mature throughout the whole thing actually. Just want to – make that known I didn't scream or shout I was just like yep that's you were very mature I was like this is this is a shame because I really loved and cared about you however if you don't want to be here uh whatever see ya anyway so he came around gave me my stuff back we were talking for a little bit he went to leave and I said no no I'm not done yet <laughs> I actually I actually <laughs> made him stand there whilst I read the letter <laughs> that he had written me good I was like you're gonna sit here and scream while I do this and then, and then anyway, he just said some things about like, he actually said that just before Sydney, he had redeveloped feelings for his ex. <laughs> I know, lady. Um, uh, and why would you openly don't say, say that? that? Even if you have, keep it to yourself, give it a month, then you can get back with your ex. Shut up. Like, you don't need to kick someone while they're down. Oh, FYI. <laughs> I also still love my ex. Fuck you. Bye. Like, fuck And off. when he said that, I was like, yuck, yucky. That's disgusting. Yucky, yucky, yucky. I feel yucky. And also, that was like two years ago. It was two years ago. And then I was like, I mean, she lives in Sydney. And I was just like, what the hell? What the hell, bro? And he's like, it's only just happened. And I, then, I, you know, I'm going into like, was any of this genuine He's adamant that it was and he really, like, saw a future with me and what the fuck ever. I don't know. Um, and I know that he had really been struggling with missing his friends and family from Sydney. Um, and then he'd bought this house, which had kind of cemented the distance between them and him. Um, and so I was just thinking, like, I guess he's really having a tough time with that and it's kind of lumped into missing the friends and family that he had and she was part of that was kind of what I was trying to tell myself to make myself feel better, right? We had a phone conversation and I was just like, yep, like, I guess I'll see you around. we got to learn how to cohabitate in this tiny little bubble of... Actually, no, you don't. Of he can, North Rio. He can fuck off, basically. Well, at the time, <laughs> I was being very amicable. I was like, we'll learn how to live in each other's pockets whilst going through a breakup. Then I woke up the next morning, Friday morning, to this message from him. So he'd flown out for work and he basically said that he was really, really sorry. He really loved me. He wanted to make this work. He wanted our kids with me move in and he was going to do everything to fix this to show me that how and much he, he cared and he loved me. And he really me. fucked up. And he really fucked up and he loved me. Um, and I said, and, ick. And he said, um, you will feel the full weight of my love if you just let me show you. That sort of thing, Right. And, so, and he'd also left me the keys for his house and his car at, at my gate. And so I was like, okay, wow, like I just need some time to process this, right? So I took a few days and then I messaged him a few days later and said, can we talk? Because I kind of just wanted a bit more information to think about it a bit more in terms of like, well, why didn't you, why couldn't you just say that to me in person? Why couldn't you call me to say that? Like, why was it a text message feels a bit... And also, Close. did his ex say no? Like, what's... Yeah, why? Why did you say this all of a sudden? So I messaged him just to have a chat about that and then basically said, like, actually, no, I shouldn't have said all that. I actually don't want to be together and we don't have a future. <laughs> so he's, like, broken up with me, told me the feelings for his ex, dangled the carrot... Said how much he wants a future. that carrot off. <laughs> how you cut that carrot said... down? <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. So, and I was already pissed off at the Friday text, and I said, No, you gotta put yourself first. Nicolette's like, gone, cut him, cut, cut him. him. I was like, This guy doesn't know what the fuck he wants. He can't see up from down at the moment. He's getting his custard mixed up with his jelly. Exactly. And I'm going, No, but I really love him, and I saw a future and I'm with saying, him. No. And he was like, He did honestly treat me amazingly. He did. I'm, no doubt that he did. It's just the last few weeks has kind of yes. cemented his confusion. His confusion. And so, yeah, he just slapped that carrot that he dangled, just fucking boop, kicked it off. 
and dagger in the heart. Here we go. Break up round two. Yeah, he really was like, could it work? Nah, just kidding. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> It was just like, he just said, you know, the connection's just not that deep. Which blows my mind because I, I, and I don't know, maybe potty listeners, you might disagree, but I feel like, you know, you meet someone where you have similar values and then you grow from that. But you also make the choice to grow the connection, right? Yeah. I feel like if you love someone and you care about them, you make the choice to be like, this is where I want to put my energy into. And that's how the connection grows. Yeah, And you build it that way. It's not fucking roses and fucking rainbows and all that shit straight away like you got to put the work in to get something beautiful out of that and that's always like that was the choice that I made for him to do that um, and uh, um good sex as well like that's a big connection too. yeah and we were having the best fucking sex ever which also last night was reminded the fact that literally like a few days ago he was like said when we were having sex like I love you so so much in that like real genuine tone and now I think everything was a lie yeah because then it makes you question it you're like what the fuck like did it, it like is this true or not yeah so you know ups and downs guys ups and downs i guess the good thing is we're about to get some fresh popping off content <laughs> for the potty i'm gonna we get you guys some, some stories content I'm gonna, I, I will but i just need a minute i need a minute to heal and then i'll get back on the bandwagon and i'll get some funny ass stories for you all i promise you that um but first things first is I think I've gone through the crying, the Lewis Capaldi. I'm now in the angry breakup song stage mm -hmm. and I'm moving to the anger because I'm just like the the flip-flopping, you know, I've got fucking whiplash. You just, people, I'm like, you don't treat people in that way. Like you just, if you're not, if you're not into it, you, you, you end it, that's fine. You don't, but you don't fuck around. You don't fuck other people around and you don't mess with people's emotions like that. Nah. But also if you do know you're going to end it, you don't tell them that you love them or plan holidays or take them to Sydney. Like you just, you you do it then. Well, and that's what the thing is. I reckon if you, most people in a breakup, you're like, oh, I saw it coming. Like we were shit, like all this sort of stuff. Mm. But then like if someone's saying they love you the week before. The day off. That's not, that's not off. a sign that things are going bad. Yeah. Which is, which means like how long have they been thinking about this behind the scenes and then yeah. faking it? Yeah, exactly. Which is like, do you know what that's like? New insecurity unlocked. Yeah, literally. You have reached a higher level of insecurity. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> now, nah, I'll come back from this, guys. Don't you worry. You're too Ooh. hot and in your prime. I am in to my not, prime. To not come back from this. I'm coming back from it. Uh, you know, you're allowed a few weeks. Uh, yes, I will take a few weeks. I'll pop it in the calendar now if you're not done by then. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend Maddie, she said, you got two weeks, Kate. You got two weeks. <laughs> Which you know, which is uh, I've I've had to st I've had to book a lot of appointments to start my glow up. Yeah. So I guess glow ups. This glow is ups. the next stage for me. <laughs> so for, okay, first stage. Shock. 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 I was in shock, and I was actually very calm when I was in shock. Yeah. I was just very much like, okay, this is happening. Well. Bye. <laughs> do you reckon shock and denial kind of come in one, or do you reckon denial's next? Um, like, I can't believe that happened. Like, what the hell? Yeah, denial was definitely the next day. Yeah. And to be honest, every day is like a moment. The first moment when I wake up and I haven't realised this happened and then the realisation hits yeah. and it's like real deep fucking Shit. dagger in the heart. And then it goes bargaining, which I reckon you did. Because he was bargaining, right? He, he was bargaining. He was like, I, I was love bargaining. you. And you were like, okay, well, like, maybe we could work through this. In my mind, I was bargaining. I was like, okay, maybe I can come back from this. Lucky you gave it two days to reply. Imagine if you were like, okay, let's make this work. Yeah. And then he was like, no, that would have been so embarrassing. Like, I know. For you. <laughs> I know. But the thing is, is in that message, he was like, we're together. Like, and, and I was like, in my head, I was like, well, we're not together right now because like, you actually broke up with me the other day, so we're not just, like, immediately back together. But imagine if I had been, like, oh, my God, amazing. Yes, I do love you and I do want this. And then again, he was, like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> anger. Oh, angry. I'm so angry. But were you sad before you were angry? I was so sad. Because, I'm yeah. still sad. I'm still really sad and heartbroken, confused. Yeah. But I'm having more and more moments of anger. Yeah. Because you're just like, fuck you. Fuck you. But I'm also like, it's just so sad, sad because I did really see the future with him, yeah. which is also like, is that so a tray embarrassing for me? Like, I'm tr secondhand embarrassment for myself. <laughs> Ick. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not embarrassing for you. That's embarrassing for him. Mm. Fucked it up. So, yeah, I'm definitely more in the anger stage of just like, 
and it was short lived, which is really sad. But I thought I honestly was like, this is it. Like I had the I had the shitty ex before. I did the work. I did me, and I was like, this is my time now. I yeah. get the good partner. I get to do all the cool stuff. And obviously, you know, embarrassing that I mentioned him on every fucking episode. So sorry, guys. I'm actually going to have to pull all those episodes from a mine. We will be taking all of those episodes down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next stage is acceptance. Yeah. Um, Not yet. Uh, I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm maybe not acceptance, but I'm moving more in towards the feeling of kind of like rising above it in the sense of like, People don't treat other people in that way with the mm-hmm. flip-flopping. Yeah. And I... You're putting yourself first. Like, I'm putting myself first. I don't deserve that sort of treatment from anyone. No one deserves that. No. And so I'm accepting that, like, I'm going to rise above that and I'm going to put myself above that and love myself more. Yeah. And anyone... I don't want people in my life that behave like that. Yeah. That's where I'm that. at. That is so mature of me. That is so mature of you. I'm well so done. mature. <laughs> Oh, this one? What the hell was that? I was just trying to find a clap, but... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay. So, yeah. so there you go. Cheers. Cheers being single. Um, Anyone got any hot friends? <laughs> now, <laughs> mum's capped to the limit on um age range. She said, she said, she said maximum 32. Okay. But I would like everyone, like... Uh, mm, I'm going above 20. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the minimum? Probably 28, my age. I'd say 27. Go 27. So, anyone, any listeners, I'm looking for a male, 27, 32. Who's got their shit together. Shit together. But wants to have a bit of fun. Just a little bit of fun. Just a little bit of fun. Wait, are you looking for a bit of fun or are you looking for a relationship? Both, but right now, a bit of fun. Bit of fun. Uh, but you can find that anywhere, and then you want it. You want the good ones to slide into the DMs in like four months, five months, or oh, a bit sooner. No, no, you're not getting into a relationship that soon. Yeah, that's the problem, right? I've had two like kind of short term relationships after a row, and then I'm like, well, maybe it's you me. Time. <laughs> I agree, and also, Am we're I going like we're about to go into winter, mm. so like maybe just some fun, yeah, like, someone to spoon. But then you also want to have a hot girl summer, you know? I need – because I've given up my hot girl summers two years in a row I was going to say now. two years in a row. Not two on. Two years. Nah. I Not can't on. be giving that up again. No. Maybe we'll, we've got X mouth and you can have a hot girl winter. Oh, yeah. True. There is a lot of honeys up there. There is a lot of honeys in it, yeah. And glamours. Exactly. And then, obviously, the last stage, moving on, which I guess is what we're talking about right now. Yeah, okay. So, glow up. What are we doing? If anyone has any glow up suggestions – Please send them to me. I'm tr- I'm trying with all my hardest to get my hair done. I promise you, I'm gonna get my hair done. I'm gonna sort that out. <laughs> I'm gua sharing in the morning. She already looks good, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> she just needs a, a change. I need a little change. I need to change up. No, but I think my glow up is more gonna be inner self, like inner. Yeah, I love that. In, in yeah. More me. I'm gonna work on me, not from an outside, pers- not from the externally. Although I will get my hair done because if I can look shit. Um, but a more inner me. So, like, I think what uh, my next little plan is to really get some good morning and nighttime routines and cement those because I feel like they're a really good way to start and end the day. Getting my my manifestations, my manifestations, my positive affirmations. I got to go back to the gym too because I've been, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I do do CrossFit. You, well, and I haven't been in. About, you haven't been doing CrossFit. I haven't been in about six weeks, so I got my I got to get my ass up because at the moment it is flat. <laughs> but that will make me feel good. Exactly. So I'm going to start working on some inner me glow ups. I'm also, yeah, that's my plan. Mm, love Get that. Back, back into my meditation, back into creating a life for me that makes me feel really good. Yes. Whilst also getting my hair done. <laughs> love that. Absolutely. Any hairdressers out there, please? <laughs> What's the sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we'll sponsor you on the episode if you do my hair. <laughs> Bro. So that's the next little bit. I'm taking some time. I'm reflecting. I'm going to learn something from this. Some Kate time. Some Kate time. But I guess I also am thankful from the things, the experience that I did have with him and the things that he brought into my life. For example, pet nap. We know I now love pet nap. He did bring that into my life. Exactly. Saunas. I love a sauna. So thanks for that. Muchas gracias for (laughs) these saunas. 
Saunas are great. Um, and the third thing, I guess, is he, he did really, really treat me amazingly. So he I guess did. he it showed me how I deserve to get treated. But not, that's in the, so not in the end. In the beginning, though. <laughs> But then that's annoying because, like, if you're like, he was a dick, he'd be like, ah, well, fucking bye. But, like, the fact that, like, he was good pisses me off. I know. And um, and the f- and it, ma- it just makes it a little bit harder to move on, I think. Yeah, hard to Because there's, there's, whereas last time I was just like, yeah, you're actually not a nice person. This time I'm just like, yeah, but you, you were. You were yeah. actually a really nice person and genuine. And I think he's just straight confused yeah. about his life. Yeah. Which is sad. That's but sad. also, that's not on you to fix. Sorry. Nah. But people got to, you got to be 100%. This is why I say work on yourself. Because if you don't love yourself and you enter a relationship, it's not going to work. Mm. You got to love yourself the most. Exactly. Know what you can give someone else because you treat yourself right. Yep. Whereas otherwise you get into a relationship and you're conf- confused and don't know what you want and all this sort of stuff. Yep. You got to be in the right headspace. Exactly. Yeah. And ready to commit to someone. Absolutely. That's such a great point. So you don't fuck people around. Yeah, you don't waste their time. Because I'm only getting older, let's be honest. Well, we well, still look great. But I'm fucking, you know, I've got my skincare regime down pat. Exactly. So don't worry, my skin's all right. We're doing <laughs> all right there. I'm looking great. <laughs> don't even worry about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's been, a, you know, the dealing with the loss of the car recently, which I'm still driving because I don't have any money to buy a new one, but whatever. Now this, you know, it's one thing after the other. So yeah. it can only go up. It literally can only go Bad up. Bad things come in threes. So the car. Uh, <laughs> well, what's the third thing? The breakup, the sweet potato. Sweet potato. Oh. So <laughs> on to bigger and better things. Yeah. Yeah. So moral of today's episode, men ain't shit. <laughs> just kidding. I know there's really lovely men out there. I'm just I'm just in a negative headspace. Um, Maybe can't control um, dating a woman. Yeah, I did think about that. Yeah. I thought... But then I thought I did think, I thought, yep, yeah, I could probably, I, I could probably sleep with a, a woman, yep. But I don't think I would want to be in a relationship with one long term. I feel like I want to be with a man. Mm. But I could give it a go. For the I, I do wonder sometimes. I'm like, it would be easier sometimes because you, you're on the same wavelength. Then I saw a TikTok and she was like, relationships are just as hard with a girl than with yeah, a woman. Yeah, hundred percent would. Mm. But I feel like you could definitely relate on a different level. Mm. However, you wouldn't be able to always use like oh, period pains and like stuff as an excuse because they also know what that is. Whereas guys, you can be like, sorry, I can't, not too sick, period. Mm. Right? And they can't really say anything. True. True. So, anyway, maybe you can. Maybe I can. We'll see. Yeah. I'll keep you guys updated. Re-glow up era, re-inner self-glow up, which Love is what that. we're working on. Um, send me all your messages, please. Make me feel really good. Um, and also follow me on Instagram. I've guys, I've taken my Instagram off private now. So follow me. That's because she's going to be posting hot pics. If you want to <laughs> see the hot pics, you know, I've already done one, but the problem is I culled everyone from my Instagram when I got into a relationship. So if you guys could just all follow me again, so that, that would be I get some reassurance and it boosts my ego, that would be great. So it's Kate Raston, K-A-T-E-R-A-S-T-O-N. On Instagram and TikTok. Follow me, guys. Love you all. Thanks. <laughs> and follow up for the breakup diaries on TikTok too. Oh yeah, keep in touch with the breakup diaries. I think I'm just doing that as a bit of like self care, self care, but also like journaling via speaking, yeah. speaking journaling, public journaling. Yeah, and it actually is helping a little bit at the moment. Mm. And you know, you know, we've got Ron, old mate Ron, who says, you know. Two oldies would welcome you for a week holiday in Australia. Oh, Kate. that's lovely. And I said, Ron, I'm actually I'm actually already in Australia. Thanks, Ron. But thanks, Ron. And know. then the other guy said, well, rejection is God's protection. He did say that. So, and then there you go. And then someone said to me, <laughs> I can see why he broke up with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but you know you made it when you get the hate comments. That's what I'm talking about. And I was like, that's my 13th reason. That is my 13th reason. We um, posted another one the other day on our like other TikTok account. It was like the gender pay gap or whatever. Comments only from men. Well, that's just not true. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can I see the facts? But I was like, why do you get so drinky? Like anything else, they just scroll on by. Gender pay gap? No, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I said, you know what, Dave, a quick Google would probably tell you it does. But <laughs> fucking, I'm not wasting my energy replying to your oh, message. God. So, you know what? Love that. Love yeah, that. Crap. Follow me. Love them. Love, send me lovely messages. But I will recover and I will get great. I promise you. 
And, you know, we will be releasing this podcast sometimes weekly, sometimes break. You know what? It's just, we're going to keep you on your toes. We're going to keep you on our toes. On your toes. Ourselves on our toes. It's life, guys. We had some big downs this, this couple of weeks. Exactly. So we had to go through the downs. Um, follow us on Spotify. Leave a review at De Facto. Also on TikTok and Instagram. Where we post the breakup diaries. <laughs> the breakup diaries. And cool this stuff is, in general. This the rest of this season is called the Breakup Diaries from here on out. Breakup We're going to have regular weekly updates from me. Love that. Maybe I'll regret this. Maybe I won't. But I'm pretty, I've been pretty honest. I've, you know, I tell you guys everything, so whatever. And if you get back together, we'll just pull the episode. We'll just forget <laughs> it. If guys, uh, if for some reason, which we won't because I'm rising above it, if for some reason... <laughs> he doesn't deserve you. We get back together. If we could just all forget this ever happened, that'd be great. Awesome. <laughs> all right. See you next time. Over, Over and out. out.